In today's video, we'll discuss how to set up an online store for your typical in-person brick and mortar business. Depending on your expertise and current online presence, some platforms and services might be a better choice than others. The way we see it, you have two major options, Shopify or WooCommerce. There are many more options than that, but these have some of the lowest barriers to entry as well as the power and flexibility to run pretty much any kind of shop. If your budget for expanding into online sales is zero, then WooCommerce should definitely get a look. WooCommerce is based on WordPress, and because of that, it's free to use. The base functionality is robust enough for you to add inventory, host a storefront with pictures and multiple SKUs, accept payments and ship items. Other more advanced features and additional options for things like payment gateways and invoicing are available through premium extensions, though free add-ons are abundant too. If you already have a WordPress website, WooCommerce is definitely a great option. A negative to consider is if you're not using WordPress already, it could be a lot to set up for a beginner. Luckily, you can make your life easier with themes such as Divi that let you take control and easily design and manage your own website. Plus, you're not beholden to anyone but yourself with a WordPress installation. Owning and controlling all of your own content is one of WordPress's major drawing features. Shopify, in stark contrast, is a premium standalone e-commerce platform. Shopify does have a monthly fee, but the benefits that you get from the platform might be worth it. For starters, nothing is really on you to do except for entering inventory and uploading pictures. Every feature that you need to run a successful business is included upfront. No add-ons or extensions or picking and choosing features to stay within budget. You get dedicated support too for both you and your customers. They can reach you via Shopify chat and you get access to Shopify support channels and representatives. And if you have no real website already, Shopify does include a limited blogging platform and matching themed website to your store. The services premium model is definitely a concern for some and not possessing full control over your content like WordPress may not be ideal for others. It is a solid choice, however, if you do not mind giving up some control and have the budget for it. Now it's time to actually set things up we're going to suggest going with WooCommerce for a couple of reasons. The first being that it's WordPress based and fully customizable. As you get more comfortable selling online, you could customize WooCommerce to be whatever you want it to be. The second is that it's free outside of a handful of extensions that you may want to get. And of course, you'll need to pay for hosting like you would with any website. If you have no website at all yet, you can get up and running in four simple steps. Step number one, buy a domain name. You could use Google domains, Namecheap, or really anything you want. In most cases, it's as simple as typing in the web address you want, hitting search, and seeing if it's available. While the registration fee varies across different sites, $10 to $15 per year is pretty normal for .com sites. Step number two, set up web hosting. Once you have a domain name, setting up web hosting should be your next step. We have lots of guides on choosing different hosts. If you plan on using Divi, check out Divi Hosting to make your life even easier. The most important factor when choosing a host is going to be cost and your comfort level. Step number three, install WordPress. We have a very simple guide to installing WordPress that we recommend you check out. And also just finding the information on your host cPanel or dashboard should be relatively easy. Now, step number four, install WooCommerce. The setup configuration is very straightforward. It asks for the store details, such as your address, the industry, what kinds of products you'll be selling, the business details, and then it'll let you select a theme for your site. The final step here is to set up your payment gateways and input tax information in. Now that your new online store is set up, the real fun begins. Adding the products to your store so that you can sell them. WooCommerce adds multiple menu items on the left side of your screen. Hover over products and click on the add new option. The product name field is whatever will show up to the customer. The large text area will be the description of the item on the product page. As you scroll down on the page, you could fill in specific and individualized product data. The first one you see here under general is pricing. The regular price is the everyday price, while if you enter a sale price, you can schedule it out. The short description is simply a sentence or two that describes the item in summary. These are the blurbs most customers will see first. To the right of your screen, you will see boxes for more options. Product categories are straightforward. However you split your items, do it here. Shirts, shoes, accessories, and so on. They're nested, so you can have subcategories too. Product tags are more specific sorting terms. Maybe Windows software or Mac software, iPhone app, Android app, that sort of thing. 
You group items this way without having to make a category for a very specific and limited quantity. Product image is the main photo for the item and will be used in any place where a single image gets displayed, while product gallery is the whole collection that people can scroll through as they look at the item page itself. The inventory tab is incredibly important, especially as you are moving from an in-person store to an online store. You can set specific SKUs for your items, show whether it's in stock or not, and you can choose to limit the number of purchases someone can make in a single order. The shipping tab provides information to calculate automatic shipping costs. Linked products is for upselling. It's similar to the products that would sit on your checkout counter at your physical store. You could set any particular product attributes you want, and these are sortable and filterable in the shop, letting your customers find exactly what they need. Finally, the advanced and get more option tabs are generally left untouched when you're just beginning. Now add all of your products to your site, make sure your payment and tax information is filled out, and just like that, you're open for business. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content. With that said, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.